Hello. Hello, hello, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to day three of the online craft show. Um, I'm Natalie May, and today, today we are. I'm doing some live Facebook mini classes for you, completely and totally free. Bless you, Louise. Bless you. Got one more. There we go. Bless you. Um, <laughs> and doing some little mini classes and telling you about all the amazing things that we've got happening uh, at nataliemay.com.au. So today, as part of the online show, we have got um, Lindy's Gang products, All and Create and 49 and Market at 15% off online. You can also get 20% off of scrap effects and stickers such as alphabets and stickers and things like that. And you can also get an additional 10% off of clearance. Now you can grab these on nataliemay.com.au anytime between now and end of day tomorrow. So here are our details. You can also join our Facebook community. We have a fantastic community of ladies who are nothing short of amazing and supportive, and we love sharing all of our creativity. Uh, there we go. So what happened yesterday? No, Thursday. God, I don't know what day it is. A couple of days ago, I released a new range of collage papers. So uh, there's this set. There's some gentlemen's eyes as well that I used in a class yesterday. We released Ella and Macy. These two girls here. Uh, so these are collage papers, uh, perfect for all sorts of applications. We released the eyes, which are absolutely gorgeous and can help you off with some um, projects and starter pages on your projects. This is what is left of one of them. This is Del and Pina. That one there I currently used. And then we also did some uh, honest statements we'll call them so these is called unfiltered thoughts and they've got quite a few um, bold blunt words in here and then we also have we finished off with sweary statements now sweary statements I'm going to be very quick on showing you this one because it is full of very sweary statements so today I thought I would use the one of the ladies on here, Ella and Macy, to create an, an art journal page in my Large Dilutions journal. Um, I think I might use her, that was my thought process here. Uh, and I want you to pop in the comments if I go for something bright, something neutral, or something pastel. What would you like to see me do today? So I'm just going to do a, a light paper tear, a water tear, which is a soft, easy way of tearing off our image. So if you can comment bright, neutral or pastel, what do you think uh, I should do this time for this page? Pastel, Karen suggests. I like that. Oh, we've got one for bright, one for bright, two for pastel, three for pastel. Bright, pastel, ooh. Oh, it's a bit of a mix between pastel and bright. Oh, Robin's saying pastel. All right, we're going to do a pastel page, okay? I always do something bright. Mind you, the last two days I've been creating in quite a neutral tone, haven't I? Doing pastel is something different. <laughs> Excellent. All right, pastel it is. So you can see here, water tearing, just with water, wet your collage paper, is certainly the easy way of creating. All right, 
Okay, I'm sorry, creating, tearing off. So let's go there. So there is my image. So doing a pastel based page, that means I need to have a look through my stash for some pastel paints. So let's see what I've got here. I have got carnation. I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, crack into some art by Marlene's because there is some beautiful colours in here that I, I really love working with. Uh, they have, this set here is a much softer set. Uh, what else have we got here? Where is my favourite little, we've got Sage. Sage is very similar to Breeze, I can forget that one. Mineral, no, that one's Heather. And Mineral is this grey. So I might just pop Mineral in instead of Heather. And... Clotted cream. Not yet. All right. Let's do this. And I'll do a work on this side page, this page here. What's crooked, my camera or the... There we go. Okay. So my large dilutions uh, journal, I have prepped the page by putting down a gesso base. So the reason being is I want to do a, I want to pop her down here, but I would like her to have more of a Caucasian style finish rather than a, rather than a yellow at this stage. Um, I know that this is where she's going to go, so I'm going to keep it super simple today, and I'm going to, I'm going to need a pin, aren't I? Uh, and I'm going to just get some beautiful colour into our background. So with all of the Art by Marlene paints, I uh, highly recommend having access to a pin. They do block up, and that is because they have a super fine nozzle. So having a pin handy is certainly going to help. And I'm going to start in, and I'm just going to do a real swirly sort of page here. So, oh, come on. I'm not going to swear at it. Right, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to work in a round sort of finish and I know that I'm going to get a bit of a base down here with this clotted cream paint that does not want to come out of the tube today. You know what's going to happen, it's going to come out really quickly, isn't it? But popping down a gesso background is going to am I blocking up. Put, putting it down is going to. I'm getting frustrated by this, guys. Sorry, it won't be a moment. There we go. Right, putting down a gesso base is going to seal our paper and make it all one color. Okay. So I'm working in a circle. I want her off to, I want her in the middle of the page. Uh, so I'm going to pop down some carnation next. And using, I'm using a dry brush. So what that means is I don't have any water on my brush. I'm keeping it really, really light. And uh, it's not going to take a long time to dry. And blending the pa the colours into each other as well. So going into here next, I've got peony. 
in the Art by Marlene paints. And you can tell, no, no prep work here, haven't unclogged my paints. Totally letting you guys decide the fate. And this is a much nicer, deeper I was, going to go, I was going to do a single page, but I'm heading now towards doing something like a double page, maybe. <sighs> some days, some days. All right. So you're getting the warts and all version today, aren't we? Alright, so you can see what's going on here. I'm just going to leave that with the cap off so I don't have to do any more swearing. I'm going to go into Heaven next, this really lovely blue. Look at that. And I'm not cleaning my brush off. What I am doing is taking a little bit of that pink off. And going around like this. So this technique works a treat with any color paint, but what makes it work are the colors that you put next to each other. I would not have put green next to pink because then they are going to go quiet uh, quite muddy and I don't want a muddy effect. I've got enough going on here at the moment without needing a, a muddy sort of page. Um, I am going to go into this page here and I will spread that into my next page. Didn't get off to a good start here, did I? Now I'm going to go next with, oh here we go, look at that. That's a beautiful colour, that's breeze. And that's an unnecessary amount of paint. But you know what? What do we say? Let's commit. So this is all gonna be about layers of paint. I'm not going to, I know that this is my ugly background that I'm building up. Uh, before I put anything else on so I'm not stressing too much but I'm looking at getting a nice you know setting that tone for the background uh, do I feel like I need to this mineral is probably the wrong color but I'm gonna get in there anyway stuff it we say And then I'll finish it off with a little bit of white in a minute. I like it. So now what I need to do is I'm going to clean my brush off, pull my sleeves up. And I'm going to start again and I'm going to have a bit more of a play. So this time I'm just going to get that paint onto there. Paper towel. So to get a dry brush finish means that I want to squeeze all the water out of my clean brush and then I can work around around my page. And I'm not putting any water, I'm getting the true colour of the paint come up rather than a, a washed out version. So I'm over Lapping it into that pink. And that is where her face is going to sit. So she's going to end up in under there, okay? And now we're going to use this peony. Oh, see, we both know that that was going to end up badly. Just the two of us knew that. But 
that's okay. Taking some paint off my brush. I would rather show you the warts and all versions. Got a goober here, how do we fix that? We just blend it backwards and forwards. So I've decided to not put that carnation in again, but just stick with this beautiful peony pastel pink. And I'm pushing that pink into the blush. So again, this is something that I have done again and again and again. If you have a, back, have a look through my YouTube channel, you will find a ton of layouts in a similar sort of style. And that's because it's an excellent recipe. It works for me. Right, haven't cleaned my brush, but I'm just gonna spread out this beautiful heaven paint, which is this lovely art by Marlene. I think this is from like the Muted collection, or no, the Calm, and that's exactly what they are. They're quite a beautiful calm sort of color. So we're just laying down this base, overlapping here, so that I don't get too much of a straight line. Like it, and now repeat with the green. The green is called Breeze. So these are a heavy bodied acrylic. So they are perfect for using in your art journal. They are fantastic for working on card fronts. They're beautiful on a gel plate. They hold their shape if you let them dry as well. So if you're using them through, using them as a nozzle and, and perhaps doodling with them, which is what some, something great that these beautiful Art by Marlene paints you can do. They, these have, they have a beautiful opaque finish to them as well, which I really like. Uh, and then I'm just adding in mineral from Dina Wakely. Again, I haven't cleaned my brush. And I'm feathering out this color, trying not to get too many distinct lines here. But it's working. It's working. Who knew, right? Uh, and I might add, where was that Heather? Heather is, I think it's a pale, a pale purple. Let's give that a whirl. Keeping that, that arch in here. Right, at this point I'm thinking, yep, yeah, okay, I'm on the right track, but I really want to add, I really want to lighten this up a bit. So I've got a paper artsy paint here, which is called chalk. And it is exactly that, but it's more, it's not quite a white. It's kind of like a, a a shade of white and with a dirty paintbrush which is what I have here it's going to lighten uh, lighten up this whole area down here and make it nice and blendy blendy right I like it so now I'm just going to pop a little bit over here because I do like that way that this chalk paint puts down a nice little base. Cleaning my cleaning the excess paint off my brush. And it's just gonna lighten up this area. There we go. A simple gradient. Put my brush down before I do anything else. Pop these nozzles back on. 
and I'm just letting this dry. I do need to heat set this because I need to add some gel medium on next and I want to ensure, whoops, that's on the floor. I want to ensure that my paint is dry. So when I bring my image, want to incorporate my image into my background, it all works in nicely. And then I'm going to need to use some of the beautiful peony and perhaps some blue to help add her into my project. I did get a bit heavy handed in this area so I'm just ensuring that it's super dry okay so here is my piece of collage paper okay nice and simple how do you get it onto your page we use gel medium all right gel medium is our adhesive we want to incorporate her into our page and grabbing a, a paintbrush a clean paintbrush which is a bit of a novelty for me at the moment. Um, a clean paintbrush. So I'm using the Art by Marlene paintbrushes. This is one of the, I think it's called one of the round brushes. And putting it on nice and simple. Now, I've mentioned before, some people try and make this a little bit harder than it needs to be. Um, but definitely the way to do it is to put it on like you're contacting school books. So I put it on a little bit at a time. So just here, and then I push that up like that over the top to ensure that it is totally sealed. I will go back and add more. So now I can go a little bit at a time and then push it up like that. Then you're gonna get a beautiful smooth finish. And you're not messing around with putting it on the back of the paper first. That is nothing more than a nightmare situation. Then if you put too much gel medium on, it goes too wet. But if you put it on like this, and you can see how I'm, I'm pushing it up. So any excess underneath goes out to the sides, like so. And then I'm going to go like that. That's essentially that top bit. And push it up and out like that. So now I'm focusing on ensuring that all my edges are stuck down and I've got no bits that are gonna fold up because I really do wanna incorporate her into the page. And because we did a water tear, we tore our edges, it will blend in there beautifully. So now I can take my mm, semi-clean fingers and just lightly polish out any lumps and bumps and ensure that I have got gel medium over every single surface. And put your paintbrush into water straight away because as soon as that dries, it's kind of gross. Okay. Drying that off. And then I'm going to incorporate, I'm going to do a bit of shading around here with some of this pink. Just taking off any excess. So going around and incorporating her into the page and then we can stencil in this area we can stamp in this area we could do lots of things i'm going to try and do something in finish this page off in 20 minutes okay that is my goal here i don't want to color her face at this stage i'm not going to do that i'm just going to leave it nice and neutral 
but I'm making sure that my gel medium is dry, especially on those edges. Rightio, let me find a... I was going to try and find a clean mat, but apparently that's not going to happen. Oh, here you go, this side's clean. So I'm going to put some paint down on here. Or a lot of paint down on there. Failing today. Let's just scoop a little back in there. And I'm also going to put in some Carnation, which is the Dina Wakely Pale Pastel Pink. How am I going? Am I nailing the pastel brief so far, guys? So with my paintbrush, and I think I actually might need some of that, some of this chalk. All right, so what I want to do now is use my paintbrush to lightly incorporate her into the page. And I don't do this in a huge area. I'm just going to work in a small area at a time so that I get it right. I don't need to go over the top. I just want to work in a small area at a time. Too much white there. How do we solve that? Let it dry. Put some more pink over it. Leave it alone. Come back to it later. So this collage paper we've designed with some grey elements coming up out of her face um, in the shading. So what we're going to do in a minute is I'm going to get some stamping into there and some stenciling. But most importantly, she's now incorporated into the page. Sorry, I'm concentrating. And for some reason today, the whole talking and Concentrating thing is not my jam. All right. There we go. Getting there. Okay, a little bit of stenciling on there now. So what I need to be doing is tying her into the page. Now, I pulled out this guy. This stencil I have had forever and ever and ever, amen. And I decided that I don't use it enough. So let's solve that problem by, and you can see I just don't use it enough. Goodness me. I'm going to start here with some green. And I'm going to stencil. I might actually go for a latex sponge. Stenciling some leaves over leaves. Okay, leaves, and I'm focusing on my edges. We have got light colours over light colours. So focusing on putting similar colours over similar colours. It's not showing up very well on camera, but there is definitely... Oh, that would have been good if it was dry. Note to self, dry. Pastel 
paint wasn't dry, so it stuck to my stencil. Because I only dried this bit off before, didn't I? So my thinking here is, is I'm going to get some stenciling done around my page. I have some rub-ons left over from yesterday. Uh, and I think I, I need to incorporate those into my project as well. I'm holding my paper up, as you can see, because then it dries all the way through the paper, not just the top layer. And that's really important if you want something to dry quickly. Drying it on both sides will work. Okay, take two. There we go. So green into blue. And this stencil is called Scattered Leaves and they are all my hand drawn leaves, which I love. So my leaves are of course gonna follow, follow that design. All right, and now I'm gonna take a few up in here and I'm going to repeat with that beautiful blue over the green now unfortunately it's just not showing up very well on camera but it is working really quite nicely here. Something's working today anyway. So latex sponge just keeps it nice and light. Doesn't have to be a big bold image. Nice and light, and we've got Heather, this bright purple. Bright purple, light purple. Is anybody creating today at home? We are, I haven't had much time to do anything else but create, which is a nice change for me. Normally I don't get a whole lot of time to myself to create, but it is lovely when I can put some pen, some paint down and, and create up here, to create for myself in my journal. I do enjoy doing it, I just don't allow myself enough time. All right, I'm gonna get this pink out again because I need to put a little bit of pink around the place. Now that isn't showing up very well, but actually let's go for that light pink instead. And I'm just giving it more of a swipe Tone it back. So then it's nice and light and not too strong. All right, so I've got one more live to do today, guys. Um, what do you, th what would you like me to see? What would you like me to do? 
Got any suggestions for the last live of the weekend? I won't be doing any lives tomorrow because we have the delightful Tracy Scott coming to play. But I would love to see in the comments what sort of project you would like to see me work on this afternoon for my last live of the day. Last live of the online show. There we go, getting there. Still doing your artist trading cards. An embossing card. Oh, heat embossing. Heat embossing or machine embossing? Please don't ask me to do machine embossing because that is something I haven't done in a very long time. All right, rub-ons. So I've got quite, and I'm just gonna bring it up to camera because it, it does look better. There is this really light, lovely stenciling going on all the way through. Oh, I haven't got any Catherine Paula at the moment, sorry. Um, I can't do anything with Catherine Paula inks. Um, heat embossing, okay. I can do some heat embossing. I could do some heat embossing. That's not a bad idea. It's been a while since I've done some heat embossing. So I think it is time. All right, let's get into some depth now. She's very flat. Uh, I'm just finding my Stabilo pencil. So my Stabilo pencil is going to give me some shading. So what I want to do is I want to now give her that that look of I've I've redrawn this image, you know. I've I've gone in here and I want I want to create balance. Okay? I want to create give her a little bit more around here and because I'm using a Stabilo pencil it's going to hold its shape um, and what I'm going to now do is kind of decide at this point, give her some more depth around here, and her lips, and her jaw. Do I go for scribble? Right. Rub-ons. Let's use some of these rub-ons left over from yesterday. Let's crack these out. So I have got here some 49 and marker and some simple stories. And I'm going to put these around my project. I think that that is a great idea. So rub-ons are awesome. So this is the packet that I opened yesterday and put on the front of my, my mini album. Uh, so I want to now incorporate them on my page. Um, so rub-ons rub are great for projects because they do allow you to just quickly transfer an image effortlessly. And you don't have to transfer the whole image. 
it can be a partial. And that has its has huge, huge advantages for wanting to get something a little bit grungy. Which is what I want to do it here. I don't mind that I'm getting this partial sort of image. I'm really chasing that look. But when you do use rub-ons, I highly recommend cutting them out from the backing board, from the backing sheet, so that you don't end up with random bits where you don't want them to be because that quite happens with rub-ons. That quite often happens. How am I going? Oh, nearly there, 15 minutes. Right. I give myself a time limit or I can sit here and waffle on for hours. Oh, how about, how about I do a set of artist trading cards? Can someone remind me what our themes are for this month? Linda, where are you? I know one of them is Wonderland. And one of them's pink. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I can do that. I can do that. And you know what I can also do? Is I reckon I can do something with Lindy's and I think I can do something with All and Create. What do you reckon? Okay, whoops, missed the bottom of that bit. She doesn't want to come off there. I've got that one. No, it doesn't want to come off. Okay. So we can see what's happening here. Rub-ons are building a story. And I'm not going to overdo it. I'm just going to keep it simple. Have I got some words in here that I can use? Yes, I do. So most importantly, what we're focusing on here with this particular little project today is we are, we are focusing on how to incorporate collage paper into, collage paper into our page. So collage paper will go beautifully. This is one of our new designs. But collage paper will go beautifully on lots and lots of different projects. So, of course, this one is an art journal page. So, we put our collage paper and incorporated it into our page. So, we get that, oh, look what she's done, look what she's drawn effect. Okay. And now we've, we've just used, I think I've got too much paint on my page because my rub-ons are not sticking to my page. Here we go. Oh, it's a fail from me today, guys. I suppose you can't get them right every time, can you? Well, here we go. Can't nail it every day. Look, even the grown-ups sometimes fail. Sometimes it helps to swear at it. <laughs> OK, 
Oh, bugger. It's my neck. Okay, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Right, I'm gonna come back to that because it's just bugging me. I'm gonna put that aside over there so I remember because sometimes it's best to walk away and you can go back and you can build on it. Righty O. Lots and lots of bits and pieces going on here. We've laid down a foundation here. I can add some scribbly words in here. I'm just going to leave her sitting like that because, um, to be perfectly honest, my level of frustration on getting that rub on off at the moment, which normally works pretty good, is high, but let's not sugarcoat it. I'm human too. So let's just fix the problem with a black pen and I will fix that up in a moment. Um, but yes, you can very, very easily go in and, and work on these. A little bit of a love heart here. I think the other problem is, is I've still got a bit of dampness going on here. Um, And, and working with this background, if I'd waited a little bit longer, I think, for my paint to dry today and been a little bit more patient with it, it might have been a different story. All right. So rub-ons are, rub are super easy to use on your projects. Um, I feel like I'm, I can make her, I can build some more up here. And I think what I might do is I'm going to give my paint a little bit more time to dry all the way through and that has been my problem today is being too impatient so I will finish this off um, hopefully before the next class and then put a photo up on the on the website um, because yes that just hasn't put it down Natalie um, that hasn't worked for me and that's okay. I'm gonna leave this as is, but I'm gonna build some rub-ons around this area and take a take a photo uh, and, and get it through, all right? So wherever you are, I hope you are having a wonderful afternoon. Um, jump online to nataliemay.com.au. That is where you will find all of the things that we are using, that I've used today. 49 and Market, which are the big rub-ons that I'm using. You will find those at 15% off today. You will also find a 15% off of Lindy's and All and Create with scrap effects at 20%, 20% off of thickers and an additional 10% off of clearance on nataliemay.com.au. We will be posting all orders out on Monday and Tuesday. I'm collating your orders together. So you can add to your car, add to your little order that you did previously. Postage is not free. Postage is eleven ninety five or fourteen ninety five for express. Uh, but yes, we will endeavour to get that out to you as soon as we can. We've got lots of orders to pack, which is wonderful. If you are in Adelaide, you can pick up your order from Wednesday. We will not be sending, orders won't be ready until then um, because we get all our postage ones out first. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you can, you kind of see where I'm going to go here, right? I'm going to do that. It's going to go there. And that's going to go there. And I do need to leave it alone. Hello, Jody. Oh, dude, I totally get frustrated. Jody's just commented saying, uh, cute journal uh, page. It's good to see that even the pros get frustrated too. Oh, oh my God, yes. I am no more human than you, sweetheart. And yeah, my I'm fully transparent with my mistakes. And I'm, I'm also aware of my... Of where I'm going wrong here I do know that I, I need to let it dry um, I definitely know that is my downfall here um, <laughs> I have no no qualms about admitting 
that. Um, but here's the thing. You need to learn from your mistakes. I need to learn from my mistakes. And this is how, you know, a really good way of showing you that mistakes and things happen to the best of us. Um, and you just have to build on it. I would never paint over an art journal page. I am that person who just goes, stuff it, turn the page and learn from my mistakes. Because if you can't see your mistakes, how can you learn from them? Okay, that is a, a, a big thing that I'm 100% I'm in on. Um, you need to be able to see your mistakes to be able to learn from them. So um, leaving this page here for me to see is, is really important. So you can kind of see what's going to go on. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there um, before I shag anything else up before it goes any worse <laughs> um, and I will take some photos in a moment get it up on screen and go from there all right see you back here at 3 30 Adelaide time for another live Facebook where we're going to do some heat embossing and play with some magicals and all and create stamps see you then